Hi, Redline. Mrs. Van Sickle here with this week's First Chapter Friday selection, The Dark Game, True Spy Stories. It's a nonfiction book about actual spies all throughout world history. The author, Paul Jenzinko, researched the most notorious spies in history, beginning with the Revolutionary War, where, as I found out, was the first time invisible ink was used in the United States spycraft up through the Cold War, where the Russian and Eastern European governments were at odds with the United States. Even though this book is nonfiction, it reads like a novel. Each chapter focuses on a spy or events circled around espionage or cool techno gadgets. We have two copies in the LRC, and it's a great read for sixth grade and up. So check it out. If ever there was a war that showed the importance of intelligence gathering, it was the American Revolution. When the colonies went to war to free themselves from the grip of King George III, they had no centralized government. Thus, they had no federal army, only local militias, and no central treasury with which to outfit and arm those militias. And of course, they had no organized intelligence network. Despite all these shortcomings, the colonists defeated the mighty British Empire. How did that happen? Historians generally agree with British Major George Beckwith, the head of British intelligence operations in America at the end of the war, who wrote, Washington did not really outfight the British. He simply outspied us. The colony's spy network developed slowly. First came organized resistance to British actions in the form of secret societies called the Sons of Liberty, the first of which was formed in Boston in 1765. Branches of the Sons of Liberty were created in all the New England colonies, then in New York and South Carolina. As the political climate heated up, Samuel Adams wanted to get the word out across the colonies and so formed the first Committee of Correspondence in Boston in 1772. Soon, more than 80 communities in the Massachusetts colony had similar committees, and the idea spread down the East Coast. The committee's main purpose was to alert colonists to the latest actions of the British. They also organized express riders to deliver patriot propaganda, material that could not be sent via the Crown's official post offices, to rally colonists to the cause. The work of the Committees of Correspondence developed into the Committees of Safety around 1775. These committees carried the Patriot agenda a step closer to war. Their mission was military, including activating militia and confiscating British or Tory weapons and stores. Around the same time, in Samuel Adams's hometown of Boston, often called the Cradle of Liberty, some local Patriots formed what many historians consider the first intelligence gathering network in the colonies. The group was known as the Mechanics because its members, including Paul Revere, were skilled laborers and artisans. The Mechanics snooped on British activities and also sabotaged and stole British military equipment. 